Welcome back to the LPR Trading Group YouTube channel, guys. So today we'll have a, a video that will talk about Jigsaw and specifically how to set up Jigsaw from sort of the get-go. Now what you guys can see here is a setup that I have going on my Jigsaw. Mind you, the charts are not Jigsaw, that's TradingView. I just like everything on one screen. I have a few things on some other screens, but this is like my main focus for the day here. So what I want to do is sort of work you through how you can get to something like this on your jigsaw. And even if you don't like this setup, um, I'll go through most of the settings and most of the tabs or pages you're going to need in order to get yourself a, a quality setup to trade from. So when you first download and install jigsaw, this is the little box that you're going to, to be shown right here. Now, really, these are the icons that you're going to be using. This here is the connection icon the connection manager so this is where you're going to manage all of your account connections so if you were to uh, initially download or first install jigsaw you would have to go to new you want to make a new connection depending on what data feed you have for example um, I don't know if you have a uh, trade of eight you would click new trade of eight it would bring up all these connection details description username password and what server you're on etc and uh, you, would hit, you, you would type in all those details, hit OK, and you'd be able to connect to your um, Tradeavate account there. Now, all of these details are going to be provided by Tradeavate or your CMB data provider. Uh, it's typically not from your broker unless your broker is providing the data. So make sure you go through whatever data provider you have, um, or if it is a broker that's providing you the information, go through your broker, get the information, type it in here. Once you've done that, you'll be able to hit your account, click connect, and it's going to connect you to your data feed. Now, once it connects you to your data feed, your connection manager is going to show your account as green here. That means that we are connected. So what we'll do is we will go over here and we'll look at this window right here. Okay, this window, the workspace window. So as I said, the first area was your connection manager. The second area right here are orders and positions, okay? So if I click orders and positions, you're going to see all the orders that came in. Uh, you're going to see positions that you possibly have opened or closed here. Sorry, I just had that on the other window there. Positions that you have opened or closed. So that will show you your P&L. The next one is going to be, I believe this is strategy manager. So this is your strategy manager. Now, what is this? So... You can essentially make strategies. Now, if we go to new, it might be easier to show you. We just say new and we'll call it MES scalp. We hit OK. And it's going to give us a row here to type in. I'll add a few additional rows. So let's say I take five MES contracts. Um, that's, that's my average position or the position that I want to call MES scalp. I might go three contracts, one contract, one contract, okay? So this is going to be three separate orders at a given price, whatever price I click. What's going to be the stop on each of these lots, okay? So three of the five contracts, maybe I want a 10 tick stop. Uh, one of them I want a 15 tick stop, and the other one I want a 20 tick stop. If you want all of the stops to be the same, you can just make them the same. And they do not have to be a 10 tick stop. They can be a 20, a 30, a 50, a 22, whatever you want. If you want a trailing stop to be put in on a portion of the position, let's say you want these two contracts to trail, um, you're going to tell this strategy manager, when I enter the trade, how many ticks does the price have to move up before my stop starts trailing? Or when is my stop going to start trailing? Okay. So if you have, um, sorry, I might have said that wrong. If you have a 10 tick stop and you say you want this to trail by 15 ticks on each of these, that means that once you enter and price moves up five ticks, so it's up five ticks plus your 10 tick stop, one tick above that, it's going to start trailing 15 ticks. Now I typically don't use trailing stops. I like to manage position. Offsets I don't use, stop volume I don't use, target ticks I do use. Target ticks is going to throw in an order for you. So on top of buying or shorting a position, it's also going to give you a profit target. So let's say on these first three contracts right here, 
you want a 20 tick profit target, 30 tick on this other one, 40 tick on this other one. This will line up your profit targets for each order. Now, the OCO here, it's important to click these. This means OCO is one cancels the other. So when you get filled here on these five contracts, if it runs up 20 ticks, that means it's going to cancel your three contract stop order. It's very easy when a trade's working or not working to forget the other side of your orders in the market. I've done it before, it's not pleasant, it usually results in a loss. So what this will do again, is once your three contracts get filled at your target or your stop, it will cancel the other order, okay? We'll get rid of that. This is an alert window, I do not use this. Jigsaw is a feature that gives out some really annoying alerts in my opinion. Um, volume alerts, large order alerts, pretty much everything that you can see here on the DOM, but it's it's speaking it out loud and um, it speaks too often. Let's put it that way. It, it confuses me more than anything. I just don't use this. I'd rather just visually see what I'm seeing. Um, session manager, we don't really need to get into that. Uh, Depth in sales. Okay, this is important. This is sort of what we're seeing here on the screen right now. So what we do is we'll click depth in sales and depending on the symbol that we want to use or trade, the market that we want to trade, for example, I trade ES and MES. So what I like to do is I open ES. So I type in ES. I go to the most recent contract, which would be the June expiration. I click that and I hit OK. So what this is going to do it's going to open up a DOM and a little trading window here for me. So this is where I can execute some of my commands through. Now this DOM is an ES DOM, okay? What I recommend is even if you're trading MES, I recommend you look at the ES DOM to trade MES. Now, if we look at my screen here on the right-hand side, you can see that I have this DOM that has a blue background. Let me just... This one right here, that's ES. This is MES. Anytime I'm executing an order on MES, I'm always looking at the orders on ES, and then I'm executing on MES, okay? If I'm trading ES, I just look at the orders on ES, and I execute on ES. So now this is a DOM. This is rather basic right here. Beside my ES DOM right here, so this is the ES DOM, beside it I have this auction vista. Let me open this up a little bit. So beside it, I have that auction vista. Now, how do we get that up? We just click this little chart button here. When we click that chart button, that's going to attach this auction vista to the side of the chart. What does this auction vista show you? It gives you a, a, a different visualization of the larger orders that are sitting on the bid and the offer. So the way I've configured this, because the default configuration of this auction vista um i don't like it pretty much what it is the default configuration is all of this red is gray all of this blue is gray and it goes on a scale from dark gray to white um, i believe dark gray is smaller orders all the way up to white which are the largest orders now what i've done is i just want to see the large large orders if you have if you want to see every single order on this auction vista, it's just going to be a bunch of confusing lines, colors, shades, all this jazz and nonsense. I find just looking for the largest orders, maybe the, the, the highest two or three tiers of orders, and we'll get to that in a second, it's going to be the most effective for your trading. So let's get into this. Now we have our DOM open right here. If we go to this little wrench icon, this is probably going to be the most important important button at your DOM or configuring your DOM. You have columns here. So we can actually add a bunch of columns in here. You see I'm adding all of these columns in here. You can add these columns in here and they're going to give you more information. One's going to be a volume profile. One's going to be you know your current bids. One's going to be the current ask. You'll have snapshots. Um, so for example, this is the snapshot column. Um, you'll have some bid ask column profile, you have market orders. So 
this is where you're going to configure all that. And I'll just open mine over here so you, so you can see how I have it set up. This is everything I have set in here. Now, the one hiccup that I found with Jigsaw, and I can't figure out how to get around this, is if I remove, let's say, the bid profile, okay, and then I add the bid profile back, it automatically goes to the end. So if you accidentally remove, and you know, you guys can go through this. If you, if you guys can figure out a way, a workaround on this, that'd be fantastic. If I remove the bid snapshot column, for example, and then I add it back, it goes to the end. So you almost have to figure out what each column is, and it's hard because some of these columns are the same color, and then go back, uncheck everything, and check them in in the exact order you want them to show up left to right. Okay, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, but it's just the initial setup, and I mean, it is what it is. If you guys can figure out a way to uh, wor work around this, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so that's the DOM, and this is where you're going to configure all of your, your DOM columns. Now, what I recommend here is on your market depth and snapshot depth, I will show you mine here, you go 120. So what is this going to show you? This is the market depth, so it's going to show you up to... 100 ticks on the ask side or the offer and 100 ticks on the bid side for sh for orders sitting on the bid or the offer. Now, snapshot depth. Snapshot depth is going to be this column and, well, this column, the top section and the bottom section. What is snapshot depth? Snapshot depth is going to show you how many contracts are added to the bid or subtract it from the bid or add it to the offer or subtract it from the offer. So for example, in this little snippet here, we can see one contract is being removed from 4450, one's being removed from 4475, one's being removed from 4125, and four being added to 4075, okay? Seven are being removed from 3750. Um, numbers of this size aren't too significant. We are in the after hour session right now. Uh, but you're going to see during the day, those numbers become more significant, especially when you have an iceberg type order, trying to hold up price. You'll see a lot of ads to the bid of the offer. Okay. Let's close that. Now we'll go to appearance here. <clears throat> appearance, it has so many different uh, little tabs here. Now all of these tabs are going to be a column within your DOM. So... For example, if we were to change, let me see if we can find them. Uh, price, 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 right here. So if we were to change the price column, so the highlight background is white. The font color is blue on this guy. Um, this is where we would change everything here, right? The non-traded background, we want green. Uh, you guys, don't copy this, but this is this is not how I have it. I'm just showing you guys how uh, how you can configure it. So the font here, that would be terrible. Uh, we would leave it black. Uh, traded colors, maybe here, and yada, yada, yada. You get it. So that's where you configure them. And this is where you configure every single column. You can even configure the font if you want a more uh, visually appealing font. If this doesn't appeal to you, you can change the, the font size, et cetera, et cetera. Shortcuts and hotkeys. These are important. So you can use shortcuts and hotkeys on Jigsaw, and this is where you program them. So you're not going to have super, super in-depth shortcuts and hotkeys, but you can program hotkeys. You know, um, join the bid, join the offer, buy up market, sell up market, um, quantity. So all your quantities in your trade window, you can program those to hot buttons, et cetera, et cetera. Go through this. Definitely, if you're a hockey trader, <clears throat> you'll definitely make use of this. I definitely use them. Uh, trading, don't go into that very much. Power meters, I don't use them. <laughs> auction Vista, okay, so this is another important thing. This is how I got the Auction Vista to look like what I have back here, okay? So I went into Auction Vista, and let's pull up this one and see the difference here. So if you look at heat map colors, you can see that they start at like a dark gray, and they go down to a white on both sides, dark gray and white. So you can imagine... The upper part of this that was red would be dark gray to white, and the lower part that is now blue would be dark gray to white. 
Now this is just easier on my eyes. I can see exactly where price is in the middle here and this is what works for me. So what I've done here, and you can copy these color codes if you'd like, heat map colors, levels one to seven, I've made dark red, level eight, I've made red. So level eight, meaning these are the higher uh, prices or the higher lots per price. Now there's not a specific number. It's not, it's not like a level eight is over a hundred contracts. It's relative to what's trading around it. So if the average lot here is, let's say, a 20 lot, maybe a 40 lot is going to show up as red, a lot that's twice the size of the average, right? So it's not, uh, like I said, something over 100. On, on, when we get into situations of the market where there's a lot of contracts on the offer and on the bid, maybe something like a 100 lot won't even be red. Maybe it'll take like 120 contracts to make it red, which would display as a larger lot. So that's the ask, the heat map for the ask. This is the heat map for the bid. Now for the bid, you'll have to copy this. Actually, you know what? This is easy, easier. 0, 76, 240 if you want the exact color on the bid there. Okay. Close that out. We can close this guy out. So right now what we've done is we've gone through our, is this it? Yeah. So we've gone through our DOM right here and showed you guys how to set up the DOM. So this would be everything I have here. Now when you're setting up an MES DOM, if you want ES and MES side by side, just open up another DOM or depth of sales right here, depth of market, and you just type MES and then you go to the June contract on MES and you hit OK. And now it's going to give you an MES DOM that you can side by side with your ES right here. OK. We'll close that out. Uh, this guy right here is a reconstructed tape. This is what I use. This is on the left side right here. It's very simple. It gives you everything you need. You almost don't even need the time because during the market, things are just moving so fast that really the, the, the time is not going to play a huge factor. Uh, price and number of contracts exchange would probably be uh, sufficient, but this just works for me. Now, what I like about this reconstructed tape is it gives you a really good visual of pressure on the bid and pressure on the offer. So if you have pressure on the offer, buyers market buying the offer or over the offer, the, the whole row or the whole background of one of these lines is gonna turn a very bright blue. So when there's a lot of pressure, even if I'm looking in the center of my screen, I can see this reconstructed tape just light up blue, okay? Uh, inversely, it would light up red if we were hitting the bid really hard or below the bid. Uh, if you want a chart on Jigsaw, this is where you click the charts. It's not going to let me open a chart. I can try. I don't have the latest version of Jigsaw here. It was just launched, actually. Let's see what it does for us. Uh, but all in all, I have to admit that, uh, yeah, to continue using day trader charts, please log in and download the latest version. Um, I have to admit, uh, Jigsaw charting is not the best. It's, it's, it, that's not what it was built for, really. It was built for order flow, and it does very, very, very well on the order flow side, so I credit them for that. Um, if you're looking to chart, use something else possibly like TradingView. That's exactly what I use here, and, and it works out just fine. Uh, I don't use summary tape right here. I use the reconstructed tape. These are like gauges. Uh, I'm not a fan of them. I feel like I'm driving an F1 car or something when these things are up. Uh, they've done nothing for me. I had them up for a little bit. I never looked at them. Don't use them. Don't have them on my chart. Uh, journalytics. So if you do purchase Jigsaw and you subscribe to Jigsaw and you have the platform, and you're trading live, you will get a Journalytics account. So Journalytics is $47 a month. You get that free with Jigsaw. Now that is an automated journaling system. That's fantastic. It works great. It tracks all your metrics. You guys should check it out. You hit the chat button right here. If you have Discord, it'll pop you into the um, Jigsaw Discord channel. And it's, it's relatively helpful in there if you have any questions. So I think think we sum this up. Let's go down to these little bars down at the bottom. I'm actually going to close this guy out. We don't need it anymore. Let's pull one of these guys up right here. Okay, so this is where you can set orders from. 
or you can use your hotkeys. So if you click each one of these buttons, this will load the amount of contracts that you want to initiate an order on. So for example, two, anything I do from here on out is going to initiate based on two contracts. Now, if you trade bigger size, you right click this, you type in 10, you hit check mark, now you have a 10 there. You can put any value in these things you want. You can also program these buttons to hotkeys. So I don't think I have my program, no. Uh, but if you program to, them to hotkeys, for example, I don't know, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, when you press F5, it's gonna load five contracts. Pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> what are these guys here? So the way that I trade is I use the DOM, okay? So I, I execute my orders on the DOM. I click right here to put an order in to the market. So if I click here and I sit my order here, that means I have one contract to buy at 39.49. Um, if I click down here on the bid, I'm trying to sell one contract at 36.75. If I click down here on the blue side, that means I wanna buy a contract when we get down to 36.75, okay? And inversely, if I click the sell side up here, I'd want to sell a contract when I got to 49.75. Now, <clears throat> I recommend leaving this on auto. Jigsaw is very intuitive when you're trading off the DOM. It's never made a mistake for me yet. But if you wanted to tell it, you want to put a limit buy order at 39.35. Well, you could click limit and go to 39.35 and hit that. Or... You could just leave it in auto and it knows you want to buy here. So I don't see a reason for taking, for taking it out of auto. Just leave it there. It works. Um, it's never failed me. It knows when I'm putting a stop in. It knows when I'm putting a, a buy order, a sell order, uh, whatever it is. It, it The auto function works very well. Uh, so your orders right here, are they good for the day or are they good till cancel? This is where you choose your strategies. So when we built out that strategy before, we actually built it on an MES. So I'll pull this up. I don't think we saved it. Shame. Anyways, I have one in here. You can select your strategy here. And when you select this strategy, anything that you click, any order that you execute, it's going to execute that strategy, right? So I'll execute the stop that you told it to take, the take profits, if you put a trail stop, it will execute everything that you put in that strategy builder. We have a few buttons down here. S2P, stop to price, okay? So what does this mean? Let's say, let's say I was long ES right now, okay? And I had a sell stop right here. I don't think it will work here. If I hit S2P, oh, it does work. I hit S2P and I click in this column on the price, it will automatically bring my stop to the price I clicked. You can also drag it on the side here. But sometimes if you have a hotkey bound to S2P, for example, F1, you would just have to hit F1 and then hit here. It will automatically bring your stop to price. This is very effective when the market's moving quickly. I don't use it very often, if at all, but a lot of people, especially scalpers, might uh, enjoy that. Now, the same thing here for L2P, it's just a limit order to price. So if you had your stop down here and then you had a limit order up here, I don't know if it's gonna move it. No, it doesn't wanna move this one. But if you were in a position, you had a stop in and you had a limit order up here for a take profit, if you hit L2P and then click price, it would automatically move that down to the price you clicked. Again, you can drag these things around. Now, the only thing that gave me a little hiccup while, while starting starting like trading with Jigsaw was knowing what columns to click depending on what trade I wanted to place. Now, this blue column and this red column are the only columns that you want to click. If you click the red column below price, you're selling if we get down to this area. If you click the blue column below price, you're buying when we get down to this area. If you click the red column above price, you're going to short when we get up to this area. So the red column is essentially all your sells or shorts. The blue column is going to be all your buys or longs, okay? OCO. So OCO is going to be a one cancels the other order. 
So if I hit OCO, for example, right here, I hit OCO and I say, okay, um, I want to buy if we come down here, but I also want to sell if we come up here. That's an OCO order. One cancels the other. So if price shot up to 39.50, it would fill me short at 39, or sorry, 39, 49, 50. It would fill me short up at this area and it would cancel this order. So now I'd be short without this order in there. Okay. Uh, watch if I cancel one of them, it takes out both orders. Where this, where I use this the most is if I get into a trade, maybe I take some profit and then I want to leave maybe a break even stop and I want to leave a couple targets out in the market. So for example, if we're long from 41 here, uh, and my stop is, oops, we OCO'd this, we'll cancel it. And my stop is, I don't know, 35, let's say. And I have two contracts left. I would click one, click OCO, go to my stop. I want to sell at 35. I want to take profit at 51.50. So that's one of my two contracts. The next one, I OCO again. I want to sell at the same price. But this one, I want to take profit a little bit higher. So there, my orders are in. Here's my stop. Here are my orders for take profit. Once this one gets triggered, we'll simulate a trigger here by canceling it. It cancels this portion of the order down here. So <clears throat> if you filled both of your targets, your stop orders will be gone, which is what you want. You don't want to fill both your targets long and then have two contracts out here to short because if price comes down, the market will short you there. And that's not what you intended on doing. We can hit this yellow cancel button right here, and that will cancel all open orders within this DOM. This is your market buy, market sell. This is your join ask, join bid. If you wanted to trail a stop, if you had uh, a position on and the position was moving, you could hit trail, 10 ticks, and then put your stop somewhere under current price and as soon as you click your stop in it would start trailing current price by 10 ticks okay another uh let me see here some other things on the dom at the top sorry guys this is a long video i mean it is what it is i just want to get everything in so you guys sort of have an idea of what's going on here so at the dom here on the top there's a few other buttons right here this button right here will center your dom now because i have two of them side by side and you can see this is current price and this is current price. You see how they're sort of offset? I actually have a, a button bound. I push my mouse wheel in and it will center both of these montages or these um, DOMs. So that's very, very helpful. If price gets all screwing, gets out of whack, it will recenter automatically. Um, these two buttons right here are going to clear any orders in these two columns. So you'll see during the day, these two columns will fill up, they'll populate. As you click this, click this, it will clear all of these columns to give you like a fresh start. This guy right here is clear current trades. So any trades that are possibly open or on, it will clear the trades off the, the DOM. Uh, this is clear current trades up, clear current trades down. It'll clear these two columns here. And this right here is clear alerts. So the far left column where you see I have these X's, if I click that, it will clear all the alerts. So these are alerts that you can set in Jigsaw. You can, you can make this column wider, actually, if you wanted to, by dragging it over like this. Um, and this is where you could say uh, high volume, uh, high of day, HOD, LOD. You could mark certain prices on the DOM after you look at your chart, so you can reference them as prices moving on the DOM. Uh, clear volume profile. I never click that because I always want to see the volume profile. This is the volume profile column right here. I always want to see that. Uh, strength meters. These are some other meters I don't use. I had them on for a while. They do nothing for me. Again, any of your customization of the DOM is going to be inside of here. Let's see what else we got. Charts, Discord. That's about it. Oh, this right here. This is going to be um, if you want to disable your order box down here. You, you had a bad day. You're tempted you're going to trade again. I mean, hypothetically, you could just come back and enable it. But if you have any sort of discipline within you, you can click that, disable it, and you're not able to enter orders off there. Or if you 
have ES open and MES open, but you only trade MES and you don't want to accidentally trade ES, disable the ES. Okay, just so you don't accidentally trade something on ES because it's a big difference, right? It's like 10x difference. Um, I think that's pretty much it. What I would say is get into it, play around with it. There's a few other buttons here on the auction vista, like some delta buttons that I don't use because I have set up on Trading View, and I like it better on Trading View to be honest. But that's a quick little run through of Jigsaw, how to set it up, how to sort of get it looking like this. I gave you guys some of my settings. I hope it helped you guys. Um, if it did or didn't, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else I can put out for you guys for content. And if you have any more questions about this video, please, uh, please feel free to ask away. Have a fantastic night.